Hi everybody, it's Imogen and welcome back to Colouring Kid. Today's video is a tutorial and I'm showing you how to colour a curtain and also how I do transparent things. So um, it's kind of a new technique that I have recently found how to do but um, I thought I would show you because I'm quite happy with the result um, in the on the page that I'm working on at the moment. Um, also, which is uh, really really good, I've found a better background for the video. This is like craft paper, wrapping paper that I actually forgot that I had but I thought I would just do it and it's so much easier now because I just stick it down with a bit of washi tape and then it's fine. Um, so yeah, we're going to do the curtain first and one of uh, my subscribers who joined a stream the other week, Atticus Finch, asked if I could um, do a tutorial on it. And you may know that I've been steadily working on this page from Fairy Celebrations. Um, I've got a post-it here of the colours from the Holbeins that I've been using for the wood. So if you want to pause the video and write down um, the colours for that, then by all means um, go ahead. I did do a bit of it on the stream, the bit up here, so if you did want to do that, um, that's fine. If you can hear noise in the background, that's my family, because obviously with quarantine and stuff, we're all at home. And yeah, I'm just going to get started. So, um, we're going to be colouring the curtain. Sorry, I'm just taking my jumper off, because it's quite warm in here. Um, so, I'm going to be colouring the curtain here, and I did think quite carefully about what colour I wanted to do. Um, and I think I'm going to go with a, a darker pink colour, so it's going to have a kind of reddish pink tone to it. And I am using Holbein's, but you can really use any colours you want. Uh, it's it's really up to you. Um, just for this page, I'm just using Holbein's, so uh, for me, I am um, going to use those. So the colours I think I'm going to use, and I might not use all of them, um, are these. So my darkest shade is going to be Wine Red OP060. Then we have Rose which is OP040. Rose Pink which is OP49. Shell Pink which is OP019. Ivory OP116. And White OP500. There's also a soft white but I'm just using this white. It doesn't really matter which one. So I'm not sure if I'm going to use all of them. I'm kind of experimenting as I go along but I know roughly what I'm looking for in terms of the creasing and the shading. So I'm going to zoom in a bit and just move you over a tiny bit. I'm, I really really like how this page is turning out so far and I'm really just taking my time with it which is lovely. So I don't really know what I'm going to do um, but I think I'm going to start with doing a light layer of the shell pink. And I'll try and do this fairly quickly for you so it doesn't get boring. So this bit's obviously fairly straightforward. The transparent um, technique that I've found is fairly new to me because what I used to do uh, was just colour everything lightly and then outline in gel pen and that's primarily what I do now but I've kind of found a way to get it a bit more glossy which I'll show you. So also if you're wondering why I do a light layer of pencil you you can hardly tell that I've even put a layer down to be honest um, because it's very light but I just find having that textured layer of the pencil already down makes it so much easier. It's just a base point, you know, a starting point. So I'm going to go in with the darkest colour, and I tend to start with the darkest colour. I don't layer up, as um, some people do, where they go from the lightest, then the second lightest, and work their way up and then down again. I work from um, up to down, so the darkest to the lightest. So I'm here, I'm going over all the creases, and I don't want this to be too dark, because I'm not looking for a red colour as such and kind of just want a slightly lighter, uh, not, sorry not lighter, darker pink. So this is a lovely wine, wine colour. I might not do all of this curtain because I'm not sure how long it's going to take. Um, so I might just end up doing this top bit. 
because you don't want to sit me uh, sit through me doing all of it. So yeah, I might just do this first bit. So yeah, I think I'll just do the lines up to here. So that's kind of where I'm at with that, and it looks very scribbly at the moment, and it is, um, but everything will even out. So now I'm going in with the rose, so that was the wine red just then. And now with the rose, I'm going over all of that, plus these dotted areas, and I really like what Clara's done, especially in her newer book, where she's added more shading in using um, the, the dots. So uh, my dad's actually on a call at the moment, so if you can hear him, I apologise. He is in the room uh, next to me. So yeah, I am just kind of feathering it out. I'm not pushing that hard. The pressure is quite light. And I'm just evening it all out and trying to make the lines less harsh. So in terms of tutorials and things, if there's anything else you would like... Uh, to see me do, uh, by all means leave them in the comments below, um, especially now with the Easter holidays and having a bit more time at home. I will have more time for videos, uh, I can't promise that there will be loads and loads of videos up, but I will try and get as many done as I can. I don't, um, I, I don't mean when I say that, that there will be a new video every day, um, but what it means is there's a bit more flexibility for me to make videos and then upload them. So. Um, right now, for example, I'm kind of I am doing them more regularly, which is nice. So that's kind of the darker portion. And to be honest, um, it is quite dark, but hopefully it won't end up being um, too dark once it's all um, shaded. So now I'm going in with the rose pink, and this is kind of where I'm using a kind of harder pressure, and I'm blending over what's already been done. So what this is um, helping me do is to lighten up those dark areas which seems strange because I've put down the dark a bit for a reason obviously to put shading in but really it's just um, to blend it all together and by going over the same area um, it, it means it's less likely that you're going to have to use a blending pencil and I haven't really been using the blending pencil with the whole wine, which is lovely. The only bit that I did do it for was the wood. And that's because I don't want the wood colour to be very, very dark. And I would have to layer that and um, do it a lot to keep it light. And I, I don't want to do that. So I, I did just use the blender pencil. And I used a Prismacolor one and it works absolutely fine. It, it's really, really great. The Prismacolor... Um, blender doesn't work just with the prism colours, it does work with a lot of different pencils. So now working our way down, I think I'm going to go in with the shell pink now, which is the one we started with. And again, I'm just going over everything. So this is a common um, thing that I do as I work my way down the colours. I do just go over the same areas. And I don't want too much of the shell pink, just because I'm not really going for that much of a peachy look. It is more uh, pink. But I find peach works really well when um, blending the pinks. And this is kind of comparable to the light peach in the Prismacolor. colour. So I'm also going up here in these creases, which I hadn't coloured with the shell pink. So at this point I would, if, if I was doing something where I was using a blender pencil, I'd probably go in with that. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is just go in a couple of places, not with the darkest colour, so not with wine red, um, but with the rose colour. And I'm going to go over the wine red bits in a slightly harder pressure. But really, I'm not, I'm not doing that much. So um, I'm not going over every single bit of the page again. I'm just doing uh, some bits. So the really nice thing about doing this now is that you have the wine red as a base. And then the strawberry... Strawberry? Where did I get strawberry from? Uh, the rose colour 
uh, is kind of the second layer of that so you see that coming through but you do see the wine red colour coming through underneath as well which is nice so as I'm going over it this um, colour that's now appearing isn't the true rose colour it's a mixture of both which I think is really really nice and it just means that you know you're mixing the colours really without realising or or um, trying really hard it kind of just happens naturally and still it's not really really hard pressure it's kind of medium and that's pretty much it and then I'm going to go in with the rose pink, pink again sorry just to lighten that up because um, I don't want it too dark And now it can be a bit more uh, quick and rough because you've got those layers down now and it's really just about um, finalising it. I forgot to just go over this bit a little bit more, there we go, I want it to all look even. So that, yeah, that's pretty much it for that. And I'm just going back in with the shell pink just a little bit. Um, what I will probably do off uh, camera is just tweak it a bit. Uh, um, kind of the final thing. Really, that's how I would go about doing um, a curtain. You can see the sorts of creases that are created um, with the shading. I hope it's helped. Um, to, I was just kind of doing it on the spot, but um, you can see it's kind of just um, taking the colour of the pink that we already have and just darkening it a bit. And, you know, if you're ever struggling for colours on a page, think about what you already have and then work from there and you can create different shades. So this purple, for example, here, I'm also going to be, I'll zoom out now, I'm also going to be using it on this carpet and then I've slightly darkened it up with a different uh, colour um, for that and I'll probably be using that elsewhere um, but this colour I'll probably be using on this as well just to give a bit of balance to the page maybe I'll do it on these bows as well um, but yeah I kind of just develop what I already have so now I'm going to show you how to do the um, translucent jars down here so you can see here sorry I've just turned the light down a bit on this um, so yeah, we're going to be doing these, maybe not both of them. This one's probably a better uh, one to do because it's a bit bigger. So what you do for this is you first colour the back drop of it. Now because I know I want this um, carpet to be purple, I'm going to grab the colours that I was using for that. If I can find them. Um, I had another one somewhere but where that's gone I have absolutely no idea which is really really helpful maybe I didn't use it no I didn't use it okay so the three purple colours I have um are these so we have raisin sea fog and lilac so the raisin colour is the slightly different purple just to give it a bit of a darker um accent to it I guess and for the wood there's a tiny bit that we'll obviously be doing on it. Um, actually, no, because this is um, has got a bit on the bottom, this here will be the colour of that. So I don't need the browns. So we do just need the purples. So I can think about what I want to do for that a bit later on, although it would be easier to just do it now. Um... I might just leave that for now. So we won't be needing a tiny bit of brown, so I've just spotted a tiny bit, but um, it's literally one colour, so I'm just putting the bit of brown there. What you want to do for this, that's literally it for the brown, um, I'm going to zoom in there. Uh, what you want to do for this is to have um, all of the colours, sorry, the light keeps getting a uh, dimmer. Um, sorry, so what you want to do for this is to have all the colours that you're using for the jar 
uh, to come out lighter than the actual image. So I don't know why I zoomed in when I just need to show you something. Uh, so if you can see here on this uh, jar, which I've done, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see there, but I have used a Jelly Roll glaze to get it translucent and also a white gel pen and I will go step by step how I did it. I also used some white ink um, as a base which will help. But yeah, what I've done is I've coloured the top bit blue and the bottom bit purple as the colours are here and here. I've used the exact same colours but I've done it lighter so I've just put less pressure on um, coloured lighter maybe with a bit of white and it really just helps give that translucent effect because obviously when it um when you look through something it's usually not the true colour so I'm just making the colours lighter so now I'm going to zoom in and kind of show you so the purples that I'm doing for this bit will be lighter than what I'm intending to do for the um for the actual carpet bit so I'm going to start with the lilac colour and it's going to be very very light and I'm colouring a light layer around all of this because obviously all of the carpet is here so what you've got to imagine is that you are just colouring the carpet as normal except it is in a jar which may seem really really strange I do just need to grab the brown for tiny bits here and in doing this obviously very very lightly so now I'm going to go in with the darker colour but I'm not doing it that dark because it's still got to be very very light so I am doing this with the lightest pressure and obviously when you're colouring the jar there's shadows on the jar as well so if the jar wasn't here I wouldn't be doing random shadows here um, on the carpet but because there are certain lines and things on this I am and we're actually going to end up whiting over these lines here um, but it just gives an extra bit of shadow which is helpful so that's pretty much the darker bit and now we're going in with the sea fog um, and the nice thing about this is that the sea fog and the lilac colour are kind of different shades of purple. This one's got quite a lot of grey in it and the lilac's got more of a bluey purple. Um, but they layer over each other really well and create a nice mix. So you can see here it is very, very light. You know, this is very, very desaturated compared to what I would usually do for the purple. And, I, and here we're going in with the lilac again very lightly. It's really just about blending things in now. So that's pretty much it for that. Um, it will end up being darker. Uh, for the actual carpet but as I said for this it won't be so I'm going to take a dry cotton bud and just blend it in a bit and then I might go in with a blender pencil just to pick up a bit of that colour and smooth it out before we go in with the next steps so yeah this will just need a tiny bit of blending so I'm going in with the Prismacolor Blender, which is actually in a um, extender because it's quite short now. And I'm just going with circular motions very lightly. Just to move that colour around a bit and smooth it out. And this is quite light. But that's exactly what you want. So it may look a bit weird now, obviously, um, because you think, well, why have I coloured a jar purple? Um, but that's obviously what you're seeing through, which is why it gives the really good effect of being translucent. If you just coloured it, and this is what I've done a lot of the time, I've just coloured it um, blue or whatever, like I kind of portray glass. But when there's something behind it, I'm trying to think more about what, what actually would um, 
would be seen and I think that's kind of where the elevation of your colouring starts to come in. So now it kind of comes to the uh, the bits that you now do over it. So there's three steps. Well, having said that, there's four, but you've already done one of them. So colouring in is the first bit. Now I'm just going to show you the other steps and then we'll, we'll get to it. So the next step is going in with some white ink watered down. So the ink I use is the Windsor & Newton ink and this is 974 white and as it's got polar bear on so it's my favourite. Um, and I water it down in a, well actually on the top of this uh, ramekin which is actually from a goo cheesecake uh, I keep, I keep it because it's really handy and I've just got some water in here which is just natural spring water but I'm using it to uh, just hold some water in so I can grab it at any time and this is really really good because it's a can it's reusable um, much much better than plastic water bottles so you open it here and slide it across like that and then you can reseal it so what I'm going to do is show you how I water it down and I'm using a Pro Arts brush here which is number two it's quite a thin brush um, so there's actually quite a lot of white um, on the lid uh, it's quite thick compared to the actual ink but that doesn't matter because we'll be watering it down anyway so you're just kind of going to grab grab some on your brush paint it onto the ramekin and then pour a little bit of water onto it very very carefully so it doesn't go everywhere and then mix it in so this is about right I might add a little bit more uh, white into it just because we do want it to um, to kind of desaturate the colour a bit more uh, when it's on the page. So you can add it kind of as much as you want to. But yeah, this is pretty much there. I will just test it on a bit of paper or something to see if it comes through. And it's still quite watery. So what I might do is just get a cotton bud and soak up a little bit just so that there's a bit less because we don't want too much. There we go, that's taken away some of the excess liquid. And I think we'll add a little bit more. So it's really kind of trial and error, getting it to the stage that you want it. And what you can do is just add a bit in a certain place and then um, add it so actually I'll probably use this now that's that's pretty good so you can just put this to the side now if you don't have ink you can use watered down paint that would work the same so um, I'll zoom in here and all you're going to do with this is literally paint over all of that area that you have just um, coloured so the aim for this is to just desaturate the colour a tiny bit. It's it's not absolutely necessary. You could um, skip this bit. But I think it's really handy to just... It kind of smooths out the colour as well. Um, and yeah, it just gives that little white tint. So this doesn't take long to dry either. So... That's pretty much done. So I'm just going to wait a bit for that to dry. And I'm going to move this out of the way. And whilst it's drying, I'll tell you about the third and fourth steps. So the third step is going over with a jelly roll glaze. Now, if you don't have one of these, I've also heard that um, there's glossy accents and I think you can get a clear one. I haven't actually tried that out, but I use Jelly Roll Glaze. It's absolutely amazing. It, it basically gives this um, sheen, which is the um, bit that you saw where um, 
it's almost a bit kind of bumpy there and it gives a shiny effect that's what the the glaze does and it's really really good I absolutely love it it looks pearlescent here but it, it doesn't turn out pearlescent um, and the fourth step is then going outside the lines with a white gel pen I have jelly roll 10 and an 8 but the 8 one is quite thin and um, it doesn't really matter which one you use but I just go for a 10 because it flows a bit better or a Uniball Signo white gel pen um, I actually find the jelly roll um, is a bit better at, um, at kind of gliding over the paper I find that the Signo can stop and start a bit but it is more opaque so it's really up to you um, so yeah this is pretty much about dry it doesn't take too long and it doesn't really bother me that there's um, at the moment a bit of rippling it will dry out and be absolutely fine so yeah that's, that's about done so now what you want to do is go in with the glaze and just do a layer of it the only thing I would say is it's quite hard to tell sometimes where you've been and where you haven't been so I just need to get this started there we go um, but this just glides over really really well it's very glossy and I absolutely love it so you just go over this just quite carefully make sure you're covering all of the space You probably can't see um, anything that I'm doing so it won't show up but I'm just going to tilt it to the light if you can see that there it's very glossy now and I'm just going to see if I have covered all of the area I might just go over a bit oh has that just dimmed again no it hasn't I thought the light had dimmed again Sometimes it does stop and you just have to get it started again. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So you can see that is very, very glossy now. And um, the next step is obviously waiting for it to dry before then going in with the white gel pen you can see on the back it hasn't really rippled which is great um, but you can really go over with the glaze with anything and it works really well um, but seeing as we're only doing the outlines it should be fine to go in with the, the white gel pen so I'm going to use the jelly roll and all you're going to do is um, if everything else was coloured around it, it would look more impressive. Um, obviously, because this is up against white, um, you can't really tell the effect it's going to have yet. Um, but this jar here, you can see with the white gel pen how it um, how it does work, surrounded by everything else that's coloured. And also here, um, I've done it as well, and you can see the white there. Um, but it is a bit harder when... Sorry, you can't see... It is a bit harder when I haven't coloured everything else. So you really simply just outline everything. And the other nice thing with this is that I wouldn't usually just start going over stuff with glaze or with gel pen in the middle of a project. I would usually save this all until the end, but I did think, well... It's a really cool technique and it's something that I was just getting to grips with and I wanted to show you how to do it before I finish the page. So I can't do absolutely every line because obviously I haven't coloured the bottom bit yet. Um, but I would do the exact same process for this other jar that's also next to it. And I think that's the only other glossy thing I need to do. 
on this page. So it's quite nice already having part of it done to accentuate the page and then I'll obviously go in with glitter gel pen and all of that. You can go over it with a second layer if you want but you might have to just let it dry or just go very very carefully, it can be a bit temperamental sometimes. Yeah, there we go. So I've just outlined that now. And that's kind of the final look. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video and um, that these two techniques have hopefully helped you. Um, this picture will probably be in my completed pages for April because I'm hoping to get this done. Um, I'm taking it slowly though and I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, but yeah, everything will be down below as usual. My website link, um, links to pages and things like that. So if you want to check any of that out, please feel free. Um, my colour and crossword is still um, on my blog on my website if you want to check that out. Lots of people have been doing it, which is lovely. Um, and yeah, I'd love to hear suggestions of videos or just to hear from you in the comments below. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you on my next video.